Question, how long does it take to pour pills in a bottle? The answer, not too long, but for everything else, a little bit longer. Here's just a simplified workflow behind the community pharmacy, your prescription, and you. It starts with your prescriber, a physician, dentist, nurse practitioner, etc. When they order a prescription, they can either write a physical one on their pad or communicate with your pharmacy directly by fax, phone, e-scripts, and so on. If it's the latter, just know when and how they sent it so your pharmacy can locate it for you. If it's the former physical prescription, they'll drop it off by the pharmacy drop-off window. With an initial screening, sometimes a pharmacy can't fill a prescription based on the order itself. For example, if this is for a refill and there are no refills remaining, or if this is an expired prescription, then the prescriber would have to write a new order. But as a courtesy, some pharmacies can fax a refill request for you. For anything that has an obvious harm, the pharmacist can refuse to fill in the interest of patient safety. For certain medications, such as a physical control prescription, they need to be written on an approved pad with certain security features. And of course, the scope of practice should be appropriate based on the prescriber's training. In other cases, there might be a delay in filling the medication. If a pharmacy doesn't have it in stock, you can either wait for the next shipment or try another pharmacy. Some states allow for moral objections for certain medications, but do offer a protocol for referral to another pharmacy or a staff member to help take over. If you're a new patient, they'll need a patient profile for you first. You'll be providing the patient name, date of birth, address, any medication allergies, and prescription insurance. In the case of new controlled medications, however, many pharmacies will require the patient ID at drop-off as well. In terms of patient insurance though, just note that not all of them contract with the same pharmacies. Based on the queue of other prescriptions, you can get an estimated wait time should you choose to wait. You can also opt to come back later, but mind the pharmacy's lunch and closing time and confirm your best phone number for any updates. Sometimes, while the medication is being typed up or reviewed, clarification is required for the prescriber to avoid any possible errors or vague instructions. Is this the correct medication? Indication? Dose? Quantity? Duration? Day supply? Did the prescriber mean for a different patient in the same household? Is the medication appropriate for the age, the metabolism, comorbid conditions, pregnancy, breastfeeding, other medications, allergies, formulation, or the route? When the medication was sent, were there any glitches, typos, or contradicting start dates? And for new controlled substances, a pharmacy may have a corresponding responsibility to confirm additional information with the prescriber. After being typed up, the medication is billed to your prescription insurance. If the insurance has recently changed, make sure that the pharmacy is aware and bring in the new card. If you have not yet received any new information and believe it is still active, you as the card holder should give your insurance a phone call to confirm. If the insurance is up to date, the information sent from the pharmacy is reviewed by your health plan. If there are no rejections, they will send back the approved coverage for the medication including any relevant co-pays or co-insurances. Depending on the type of medication, a health plan may reject the claim or ask to receive some additional information. A detailed written order DZBO form, is a form that may be required to pay for certain products such as diabetic test strips and lancets that's completed by your prescriber. Some medications in general may be more expensive than others that treat the same disease. A prior authorization means that the health plan would like some additional information from your prescriber's office to ensure that the medication selected is cost effective and necessary before approving. Workers' compensation, similarly, may require a review process by an adjuster. You may need to provide information such as the nature and date of injury, social security number, employer name, and employer contact number. For refills, a refill too soon rejection appears if you fill far before the medication is due based on previous built supply. For fills before a vacation or lost medication, that would depend on the plan and may require additional information for an override. A health plan may put a limitation on the number of day supply you can pick up at one time, or require a clinical review to ensure that the medication is safe and effective. Because many manufacturers may produce a generic medication, the health plan may only pay for a certain manufacturer's formulation. However, if the medication is not covered in the insurance formulator whatsoever, the prescriber will have to change the therapy to a preferred medication that is covered. Otherwise, you may opt to pay out of pocket, which is often the case for many over-the-counter items. Once the medication is counted and verified, the pharmacy will notify you nearby or by phone to let you know it'll be ready at the pickup window. For new medications or newly approved refills with changed details, some states require at least the offer to consult by the pharmacist. So avoid coming in during lunch hours if possible when only one pharmacist is working. When you finally pick up your medication, the number of refills remaining as well as the order expiration is normally printed on the prescription label. For refills, many pharmacies have phone apps, websites, phone services, or automatic refill systems that allow you to request a refill before physically going to the pharmacy. 
In spite of all of these details, keep in mind that this is still a simplified workflow generalized to hundreds of prescriptions at the pharmacy per day. While at the same time, the pharmacy is also busy with phone calls, over-the-counter consultations, inventory management, vaccinations, medication therapy management, and so on. Thanks for watching. We hope this gives you a better idea of what happens behind a community pharmacy counter and how it's a lot more than pouring pills and counting by fives.